Do you see the tracks over there, close to the pass? Today we will tell you about the people who have devoted their lives to studying one of the rarest animals of Kazakhstan's fauna, the snow leopard. They spend most of their time in the mountains and their work is akin to mountaineering. They have to climb steep slopes in spring, summer, fall and winter, not only to find leopards' tracks and install photo traps, but also to learn as much as possible about Ibis's behavior and spatial distribution, as well as determine the boundaries of individual hunting plots and gather data on the animal's social relationships. While in the wild, you can often witness interesting things. A young ibex has lost its mother and has trustingly approached humans. Do you happen to know where my mother is? At times, the encounters in the wild can be not only entertaining but also dangerous. The white-fanged Tianshine bear is usually peaceful but all the same, you have to be cautious. Last year, they have registered a fatal case of Tianshan bear attacking a human. It turns out that bears love to treat themselves not only to mushrooms and raspberries but likewise photo traps. We are checking our photo traps. The previous one was fine, yet the second one appears broken. Was it a bear that did it? Is the memory stick still intact? We'll see. Every season in the mountains renders amazing encounters. In late May, early June, you can meet a morale with young antlers covered with delicate fuzz. They are called velvet antlers. They are quite tender and thus morales are very careful and slow during this time. In September, with the first cold, morales start their mating season or estrus. At this time, the males are actively moving and calling their opponents and attracting the females with loud screams. Ibexes hide in the rocks most of the day. Only early in the morning you might see them grazing in open glades. To get to an ibex for a good picture, you need to be an excellent rock climber. Near rivers, dippers, also called water roosels or water sparrows, are quite often. They feed on water insects, can dive and swim underwater. Summer field missions do yield results, but in winter, when snow leopards' tracks are visible, they are more productive.
This is where it had walked, apparently going down the crest. It's hard to say for sure. Perhaps if we go further up along the gorge, we will see more tracks. To understand snow leopards feeding behavior, it is necessary to study other animals, its potential prey. Thus the researchers monitor the number of ibexes, burrows, roe deer, marmots and other species. The gorge has very steep cliff drops filled with fallen trees. Fallen trees are all over the place, making it hard to get through for both animals and humans. So it's not yet clear at what time leopards pass here. In order to understand whether the number of ungulates is sufficient for snow leopards, you need to study them all year round. It takes a lot of time in the mountains to delve into the complex linkages among landscapes, wild animals and humans. After all, it is humans and their economic activities which currently pose the main threat to snow leopards. Therefore, Irbis researchers work not only in the mountains studying wild animals, but are also actively engaged in environmental awareness raising efforts. We are now going to take part in a volunteer mission. I was always astonished by the volunteer movement. In Kazakhstan it's quite novel, but throughout the world they have been doing it for quite some time. Millions of people from around the world invest their labor and money in nature conservation. The volunteer movement has been expanding. In fact, millions of people are involved in it. At first I thought that some giant international corporations invest huge money in it. As a matter of fact, it is absolutely not so. An old lady or a student donates one or half a euro for nature protection. Since there are millions of such people, you can collect large amounts of money. They donate not only money, but also their labor and their free time to clean up garbage or engage in educational interventions. But let's not waste any more time talking. Very soon you will see it all for yourself. We are now in the Ayusai Gorge. Very soon they will launch a volunteer event here, but prior to it, our friend Alexei Grachov will give a lecture about the animal world of Ayusai. Dina, здравствуйте. Dina, hello. Here you are. When did you arrive? Just a minute ago. Where will the event take place? Here at the Ayusai Visit Center. Dina, before the event starts, could you briefly tell us about yourself and what you do? Jointly with the Institute of Zoology, Ayusai Visit Center of the Ile Alatau National Nature Park and Snow Leopard Foundation, we are conducting the Snow Leopard Week, which has actually extended into two weeks. The main thing which is taking place currently is the residents of Almaty giving the names to the seven snow leopards living around the city. So far the commission has not yet awarded the names, but if we go to the visit center, you will be able to see the actual pictures of these seven beasts. We have a unique situation in Almaty regarding snow leopard preservation, because about seven to eight years ago, several sections of the national park where snow leopards live were included in the city limits. Thus, five snow leopards actually live in Amati. There are two more living very close and entering the city area occasionally, so they will get their names as well. Perhaps it's high time to give them not only names, but official city resident registrations and passports for this matter. In fact, they already have passports. Our zoologists have already given them special ID numbers. Then, since we still have time, how about going to the visit center and talking to its staff. We are getting acquainted with Asel Isanova, founder of the Tamir Staying in the Wild School. 
We are engaged in educating and raising awareness about proper behavior in the wild nature. In other words, our main aims are nature security and human security in nature. We are only one year old. We conduct free public lectures on preparing for a hike and rules of staying in the wild. We are basically teaching people the essential which anyone planning to go to the mountains should know. For us it is extremely important to foster a respectful attitude towards nature among people. In other words, Asel, you have four quite difficult tasks. On the one hand, it is preserving nature. On the other hand, it is ensuring the constitutional right of citizens to enjoy this nature. Whereas the national park needs to generate some income to maintain its infrastructure, the local residents who have lived here for hundreds and thousands of years should somehow also satisfy their vital requirements, right? My answer will be somewhat romantic. We think that we can achieve all these by educating and raising public awareness. They are key. Why? Because very often people violate wildlife rules simply because they don't know them. I believe in education and enlightenment. This is why we do it. We are trying to talk to people using carrots and not sticks. You know, it's not even about sticks and carrots. We are simply trying to get people understand and do it as kindly as we can. We often say that we are addressing people's souls. Well, here's our team. This is Maxim. He works on TV and often accompanies our expeditions, filming everything that we do. This is Sergei and another Maxim. They are the main engines of our research. They are field experts spending a lot of time in the mountains studying wild animals, installing photo traps and conducting observations. This is Dina. She is our coordinator and manages all our work. She does not go on expeditions, yet plays a big role in our research efforts. The International Snow Leopard Day is celebrated annually on October the 23rd. The Snow Leopard Week was held in the IUSI Visit Center and gathered the representatives of various state and non-governmental organizations, including the Ile Alatau National Nature Park, Almaty Nature Reserve, Institute of Zoology of the Ministry of Education and Science of Kazakhstan, International Union for Conservation of Nature, World Wildlife Fund, Tamir Staying in the Wild School, Wildlife Without Borders Foundation, Snow Leopard Foundation, volunteer groups, and other stakeholders. The event was planned for one week, but due to the influx of visitors, it was extended to two weeks. Almaty residents turned out quite concerned about the fate of Snow Leopard, the main symbol of the city. Dozens of lectures, a photo exhibition, hands-on field classes, hikes along tourist routes, you name it. Since the time of the public debate against the development of the Kogjailao natural boundary, the level of environmental activity among Almaty's population has significantly increased. The city inhabitants are very sensitive to the possible loss of mountain ecosystems and actively defend the interests of the wildlife world. In recent years, perhaps due to the global pandemic, the flow of domestic tourists has grown manyfold. On the one hand, this brings certain benefits to the state. Tourists pay environmental fees and the massive expansion of ecotourism contributes to promoting healthy lifestyle among young people, them rejecting smoking, alcohol and drugs. In short, it allows improving the public health. On the other hand, the recreational burden on fragile mountain ecosystems has been growing as well.
Alexei Grachov briefly spoke about the progress of two projects. Snow Leopard, the symbol of Almaty and Kazakhstan, supported by the International Union for Conservation of Nature, and the development of tools for assessing the efficiency of environmental efforts to preserve the Snow Leopard and civil society engagement in protecting the critical ecosystems of northern Tianshan, conducted by the National Institute of Zoology and Forestry and Animal World Committee sponsored by the World Wildlife Fund. In recent years, for about six years, we have been examining the surrounding mountains and have revealed that almost within the city limits we have such large mammals as snow leopards, brown bears, lynxes, red deer, roe deer, wild boars and mountain goats. Five years ago, when we had just started, we walked around the city recording animal tracks. New technology like photo traps allows scientists not only calculating the number of leopard tracks, but also identifying each individual animal by peculiar fur sport pattern, as well as creating unique ID cards for each snow leopard. In two years, we were able to track all the mammals, including the snow leopard. This is the first picture taken in the Ayusai Gorge, quite close to the city. It was in 2016, and until today we have been monitoring this snow leopard. This is Tianshan Brown Bear, hence the name of the gorge, Ayusai, which literally means the Bear Gorge. Indeed, there are a lot of bears here. When the large-scale development of mountain ecosystems took place, for instance, Big Almaty River, Otkildi, Aksai and others, there was also a lot of grazing and poaching. This territory was simply not protected and there was no national park yet. It all led to animals disappearing with the Ayusai Gorge being the only place where they have survived, because it was quite hard to access it. In 1996, the Ile Alatau National Park was established and grazing in its premises went down considerably. This had immediately affected the animal world. Morals and wild boars had come back to the gorges where they hadn't seen them for many years. We have about 35-45 snow leopards in the Transilea Alatau, including 22 living around Almaty. This imposes a special responsibility on Almaty residents. The next monitoring period fell in 2020-21, when the borders were closed and there was no external tourism. All city inhabitants rushed into the mountains. The animals, including leopards, climbed up into remote areas. That is, where we had registered them before the pandemic, they simply disappeared. We also lost about a dozen photo traps because people sprawled like ants all over the mountains. Previously, nature protection efforts mainly focused on combating poaching. Without a gun, you could walk anywhere. But domestic experiences and the study of the best foreign practices had forced experts to conclude that tourist routes should be strictly regulated and should not interfere with the key habitats of rare animals. And, as in all national parks around the world, tourists should be recommended against going off the official hiking trails and walking over virgin slopes. People were just walking around and scaring the animals. One kitten of this female snow leopard even got lost due to that. Apparently due to stress, our photo trap captured it screaming and calling out to its mother. We suspect it died. It's hard to imagine it survived without its mother. Like doctors, nature lovers should definitely follow the do-no-harm principle. 
After heavy snowfall up in the mountains, it's hard for ungulates to find something to eat, and they are forced to descend to the lower mountain zones. Snow leopards and lynxes thus also go down following their prey. This time is especially difficult for all animals. It's winter, it's cold, the food is scarce, not to mention the stress due to the presence of humans. This is exactly when they need our help to survive. We are not prohibiting going to the mountains, we are simply asking people to limit their hiking, especially in February, March, when snow leopards have their mating season. This is the key time period because the very population survival depends on it. Moreover, it's not safe going hiking during this time as hikers may get lost and die. Thus, the best option is to limit hiking in the wild, go to popular places like the visit center and hike in its vicinity. <laughs> Ayusai tourist route reached the third waterfall. The route is simple provided taking all the necessary precautions. In winter, it is advisable to use crampons and open stocks. 2.5 kilometers is quite enough to enjoy the scenery of the winter mountain forest and take great pictures. The animal rest zone begins above the third waterfall. It is especially not recommended to climb here in January, February at the time of the snow leopards mating season. The rules of the National Park provide for a fine for walking away from the official tourist trail. Admission here is allowed only for the park rangers and zoologists studying wild animals. To someone such restrictions may appear too severe, but this is the practice followed worldwide. If we truly want to preserve our unique snow leopard population, they need to be left some space. Well, here we are at the main trail near the first waterfall. Previously, people could not pass here. Even now, the slope is obviously quite dangerous. In fact, it was the absence of a trail that contributed to the animals not leaving the area. It was a real wildlife sanctuary inhabited by bears, snow leopards and other animals. Today, there are quite many hikers here. And here comes the first encounter. Very cat-like footprints are crossing the trail. Can it be a snow leopard? No, it turns out to be a lynx. The toes are elongated and the snow leopard's heel is about 7 cm big. This one is about 4.5, 5 cm at most. Pay attention to the track width. This one is 6 to 7 cm, whereas the snow leopard's one is 9, 10 cm. In winter, the day is short and the sun has already disappeared behind the crest. It's time to take a little rest and give Alexei some time to answer the questions from the mission members. This place is unique because this is where the snow leopard's habitat begins. Every winter it descends following the ungulates and crosses the river then climbs up the slope. As you can see, the slope has almost no forest, only pastures where ungulates can graze. This gorge is unique in that on the same slope we can see ibexes, the main snow leopard's prey, as well as roe deer, wild boars and morals. With the cold weather settling in, the concentration of ungulates increases here. Snow leopards have their mating season in early February, March. This is where it actually takes place. And it is very important not to disturb the animals at this time and go to the mountains not as often. The ecosystems in the national parks of North America and in the US are quite similar to ours. There are also tourist trails, but you can't go off of them. 
If a trail is short and can be completed in just one day, it is not allowed to stop for a night and make fires. Mere walking off the official route will cost you $800, and this helps preserving the wildlife. Our situation is still a little different. How do zoologists distinguish one animal from another? While monitoring our animals, we already know them in the face, so to say. It's like with our domestic cats. We distinguish them, although they are similar to each other, right? It is known that snow leopards lead an individual lifestyle, but do they have any social or family ties? A male can pass and then, sometime later, even a day later, sometimes, a female with kittens will follow the same tracks. Since it is difficult for her to hunt large prey and she has to take care of the kittens, she follows her male's tracks and finds places where her husband, so to say, killed large ungulates. The snow leopards observe such family and social ties until the kittens grow up and can hunt on their own. The evening is nearing and the tourists have to return home. The researchers, though, are going deeper into the mountains to check the photo traps. The expedition will last three days with two sleepovers. The first day's task is to reach the base camp site, install tents, spend the night, and next morning without heavy backpacks to climb to the top of the ridge where the snow leopard's path passes and check the photo traps. The weather makes adjustments to our plans. Suddenly a heavy snowfall begins, giving us no time to find a convenient campsite. We will have to spend the night on the first flat plot, which we find, although finding an even area on a mountain slope is quite hard. Dinner is warming up on the gas burner. It is not yet even 7 p.m., but we are forced to hide from the blizzard in our tents. To save the camera and drone batteries from discharging due to cold, we need to stuck them in the sleeping bags and keep them warm with the heat of our bodies. At night, the temperature drops to minus 15 degrees. In the morning, a stingy sun begins to break through the clouds at times, and it is very cold. While preparing breakfast, we are talking to Sergei and Maxim. I have always been jealous of you imagining you hiking light in good weather, the sun shining and all this beauty around. I thought to myself, these people are simply hiking, studying the snow leopard and even get paid for having fun. What a great job they have. Yesterday, when we climbed the slippery slope struggling through the snow, then installed the tents in the snowfall, I honestly got so exhausted that I changed my mind. Your work is quite difficult and most importantly, not everyone can do it. Why and when did you decide on your career? In childhood or it just happened so for some reason? It all started in childhood when my brother and I used to go to the mountains to conquer the nearby low peaks. This is when we started encountering our first wild animals like roe, deer and ibexes. We really liked it. Of course, we were most interested in meeting the snow leopard because firstly, it is very rare and it is great luck if you see one. And then one day we actually met a snow leopard in the wild. We didn't wait long for it. 
We saw our first snow leopard in 2015 and it was like a sign for us. It disclosed itself and even waved its tail at us. This is when we finally decided to study it. So since then we have started seriously moving in this direction, professionally got jobs at the Institute of Zoology and underwent special training. So far everything is working out well. The theme of my thesis is moral ecology in the Transilea Alatau. Because Maxim and I have been collecting data across the entire Transilea Alatau for a long time. Over time, we came to a certain conclusion about their actual number. It is very important for science and we decided to write a master's thesis on this topic. As of today, the thesis is ready and I will soon go to Irkutsk to defend it. I heard it from the senior zoologists that during the Soviet time zoologists collected the data on the snow leopard as an extra assignment, but no one risked to tie his or her professional fate with them. Because this topic, this beast, was very hard to study, not to mention writing a thesis about it. You could hike in the mountains all your life and not see it even once. Tracking was the main research method. It can easily walk 30 kilometers in one day following steep slopes and twisting paths. A human can do maximum 2 kilometers of such a hike and collect very little data. Now the situation has changed. The leopard has become one of the main symbols of our country and therefore the state, of course, is paying more attention to it. They have always studied the snow leopard, but on the way, so to say, as a byproduct. The main reason for that was the lack of technical means like the photo traps. Do you study the social structure of the leopard population? Their behavior. For instance, what is the individual plot of a leopard? Do they protect feeding plots from competitors? Do male and female feeding plots overlap? The environment is changing and often this leads to changes in predator eating behavior. According to our data, one dominant male is conducting regular raids in the basin of each large river, say the Kaskalen. Roughly every one to two weeks. At times we register trespassing by young males. But they just pass without leaving any marks. Always there is one large male who owns a given plot, roughly 20,000 hectares. The females are more mobile. They and their kittens enter the plots of different males. We have never seen the dominant male from the Kaskalen Gorge go, for example, to the Otkaldi Gorge. They stick to their plots and do not go beyond their limits. Checking photo traps is not easy. 
They usually install them on top of the ridge. Walking along a hiking trail is one thing, pushing yourself through deep virgin snow and crossing ice-covered rivers is something absolutely different. Yet Sergei and Maxim consider this dangerous and difficult work necessary and relevant, because they are collecting valuable data about one of the most understudied animals in our fauna. We should appreciate their efforts. In addition, such campaigns make it possible seeing various animals live and even filming them. We have always encountered a roe deer family here. Do you see a chain of tracks along the ridge? Ibex says, right along the ridge top. How many? About 20, 25. And then the footprints go down. We are always happy to watch the BBC and National Geographic films about wild animals, but often do not understand the difference between filming animals in national parks, where animals are accustomed to humans and allow cameramen approach them as close as 10 meters, and filming in conditions when each successful shot requires a lot of effort and time, and sometimes can pose threat to life or health. see the big spot on its tail. This is our favorite snow leopard. Are you sure it is him? It should walk by several times. Wow, a female bear with cubs. That's cool. Look, the small bears. It's coming out from under it. Well, of course, perhaps a snow leopard is following. Here's another snow leopard, but we need to check it out from a different point. Need to process it still. Maybe it is a different one. Hard to tell because the screen is too small. In principle, everything is clear. Let's take it. The film crew has spent three days with the Snow Leopard researchers and we will definitely remember this adventure for a long time. We and hopefully you, our dear viewers, are very grateful to these guys who have devoted their entire lives to this hard job. Seizing this opportunity, we also want to appeal to the people who had stolen 10 photo traps. You should be really ashamed of yourselves. Our zoologists have an even more ambitious task ahead of them. They want to install a satellite collar on a snow leopard and track all its movements. We also hope to participate in this project. In the meantime, it is time for us to go back home. Watch our programs in the social media as well as on the Kazakh TV's YouTube channel. All the best and stay tuned.